Welcome to Cannon Fodder Diecast, episode five. Ready, set, roll for initiative. Alright, you guys remember where you were last time? This is why I take notes. We had just gotten out of the raider camp. Cobalts were taking the platter to the nursery in the cave. Yep, so there's still activity inside the yep. cave. Um, may need new half dragon. Cobalt's getting twitchy. Uh, we we to... came back to Greenest oh. and, yep. and from the information to the governor, and we rescue Laotian. Yes. And you're... I don't like Laotian. And you don't have... Um... And I don't have my Dwarven Thrower. No, but Governor Nighthill gave you the new magic... Or not magic, but sharpened Warhammer. It's plus Great one axe. damage. Great axe. Great axe. Great axe. Right. Oh, and Tiamat is going to be raised at Baldur's Gate. North of Baldur's Gate. Yep. Somewhere north of Baldur's Gate. So and you there's... know generally where they plan to go. But you and don't know what they're doing right now. And these are dragons, and I want one. And there's dragon eggs inside that hatchery. Yep. Okay. I so, want one to ride. How do you want to proceed from here? Do you I want, want to go it. back to the dragon eggs or to the cave, or do you want to go after the dwarven thrower? Are those boots still there? The boots are still there. They've been left as a holy relic. Can I make a weapon out of them? Can you explain why you'd want to weaponize a pair of boots? Because, because leaky. I was gonna say because leaky. Okay. What's your shoe size? Dumb why does that matter? Well, personally for my own fantasies, but second of all, <laughs> because I think that would determine you know, if it's baby booties, it's not going to do a whole lot of damage. If you get little, you know, Donald Trump feet, but if you've got big, <laughs> big old man feet, then maybe it'll do do some more damage. I got big old dwarf feet. Big old dwarf feet. Okay, so how much damage do you think would be fair? Um, because uh, a ball and chain would be a good reference. Just dull it down. Is there a ball and chain? There's a flail. flail. All right. Flail it's is one d one d eight bludgeoning. What if we settled on one d six bludgeoning? One d six bludgeoning. Yeah. Let's strip your proficiency off it. Nobody's proficient with weaponized boots, Kyle. It's a different kind of Krav Maga that does not so exist. So how, how are you weaponizing them? Are you just tying the laces together and swinging them around your head? Oh my then... god, it's a boot bolo. <laughs> oh god. Now it gets sensual. <laughs> so is that what we're naming it? The boot bolo? Boot bolo, I think, All yeah. Right. Oh god. Now you're uh, have people range, looking up what five feet. Is. Uh, bludgeoning. Attack ability strength, range type melee. Range type's got to be like no more than 10 feet, right? Uh, it was melee or ranged. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, do melee then. Yep. Uh, one-handed. Can I dual wield these? No, no like one no. at a time. Like one <laughs> race. Yeah, if you split the damage in half. Oh. Yeah, because then you're So does that mean I have both of... Uh, does that mean I have both of them... Both the boots attached to one chain flail? Yes. That or you're holding one boot and just swinging the other one <laughs> your head. You could always, like, tie them together and then just, like, throw them and rope people. like. Cattle. This is a point to note that the people of the Golden Tur come from deep poverty, and so they've learned to weaponize their entire environment. Not a dirty pair of socks goes by that is not used to kill one of the unworthy. I, we'll call it one-handed. We said we decided 1d6. I think 1d6 is probably fair. Okay. Because normally with an improvised weapon, it's a D4, but this is like a swinging, bludgeoning, big pair of leather boots. Probably so, steel toe. I was going to say, I thought they were steel tipped. Probably steel toe, yeah. So uh, what happens if we go find a bunch of rocks, stuff them in the boot? Can I improvise this even more? They're going to fly out the top of the boot. No. <laughs> Let's see if they're even worthy in combat. Okay. All right, so you've weaponized your boots. What are we? How are you proceeding? Where are you going? You know that some of the encampment is going to begin to move north, but at the same time, Cave of Treasures and Eggs. Well, if most of the encampment is going to move north, then we should wait a little bit, let most of the encampment move, then let people at the cave to go steal things and find baby dragon eggs. All right, so what are we going to do then? Are you investigating the camp? Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Let's go back and reinvestigate the camp. I'm not... Going as a prisoner this time. <laughs> it's not happening. Leaky was I mean, they bored. wouldn't recognize you. You've got a new pair of boots. They're not on his feet, though. Another yeah. reason why they wouldn't recognize him. <laughs> Other than he had no boots at all. This one's got two whole boots. <laughs> well, conveniently for you, when you get up in the morning, after spending the night at the uh, hold fort in Greenest, you find Laotian waiting for you at the gates. He's got two horses saddled and dressed for you. 
And he says, After all you've done for me personally and for the people of Greenest, I hate to ask anything more from you, but the need is great, and I dare to hope that you can aid me one more time. I need you to return to the cultist camp. You know your way around it now, and if the cultists are preparing to conduct another raid or a large body of them marches away, then Greenus will be in danger. But more importantly, if anything substantial is carried into the cave or out of it, like the eggs, I need to know so I can send word north. If you have a chance to get into the camp and look around again, that would be the ideal way to spot anything that's changed. ba 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 Yeah. So he says, I don't recommend letting yourselves get captured. Again. And then he winks at Leaky. <laughs> we guys did some prison time together. We did. So he's got horses for you, which will foreshorten your travel by a lot. Do you guys know how to ride horses? I don't know. I do. I used to steal them, so I would hope I know how to ride them. I'm I was sure. a highway robber. That's true, uh, yeah. I, I, don't think, I don't think I know how to ride a horse. I want you to think through the clouds of fog and war. <laughs> back to your time with the Golden Tur Tribe. Did you eat them, or did you ever ride them? I don't remember. Oh, boy. Your dexterity is decent, isn't it? 20. So if I get your short little fat butt up on that horse, do you think you're magical enough to keep your short little I fat hate butt? I magic. Beat you. That's you... not going to help learn to ride a horse. <laughs> yes, it will. Negative reinforcement. Do you think you're agile enough to keep your short little fat butt on that horse? I might be. No one throws a dwarf, though. I was going to give you a leg up, so shut your mouth. No one throws a dwarf. I wasn't going to throw you. The horse might are we, throw you. Are we you. rolling to find out if you know, if you're acrobatic <laughs> enough to stay on horseback? I was I was going to roll an acrobatics check to see if I can get up on the horse myself. Fifteen. I'd say that you're able to definitely step up onto the horse. I don't need your help. Wait, so is he riding a horse or a pony? It's a smaller horse. It's size appropriate <laughs> for those with different needs. Are you However, pro- as Laotian looks at the party, he looks into Leaky and there's this far off glimmer of like distant childhood memory of wild horses and plains and galloping bareback, wild bareback, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time you were one with the horses, my friend. You're just, just distantly remembering it like a memory of trumpets. And Jen's like completely comfortable on the horse. <laughs> Yara's completely comfortable on the horse. She's ready to go. And you're like just beginning to rekindle those lost loves. It takes less than a half hour to get to the camp because you're able to gallop. And you meet no resistance while you're there. But from a distance you can see big towering columns of smoke. As if the camp has been lit on fire. Great. How do you proceed? I dismount. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I was going to say, are you going to dismount or are you going to fall? <laughs> well, how do you want to proceed towards the camp? Sorry, I'm also writing. She's doing that magical thing that you don't understand. Recording sounds to paper. Remember, he's not stupid. He's just uncivilized. Report any major changes to Laotian. On fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that's a major change. How, how are you proceeding, though? Uh, we should probably go stealthily Okay. up the cliffs overlooking the camp. Okay, so I'm going to tie my horse over here to this tree. Case you have to tie them up? Yeah. Do you want me to tie yours, Leaky? Please? Can you hold on to it for a minute? Hold, hold these. They're called reins. Hold that. Don't let go. Okay. Not sky reins. Spelled differently, if you believe it. <laughs> tie my horse okay. to a tree over here. Thankfully, an unburnt tree. Okay. You don't hear anything as you approach, but it, is, it does stink. It smells like the wet burning of sod and of... Um, usually non-consumables, leather and cloth and hair. Probably the tents. Most likely. You sneaking? Yes. Okay, let's call it a DC 10. 17. Very, very sneaky. 18. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> you actually find that there is nothing moving within the camp, but all of the tents and the huts have been burned to the ground. And you don't see anybody moving or anybody alive, and there's just debris and garbage and stuff strewn all over the place. So it's clear that the cultists cleared out of here fast. Somebody probably set fire to the tents, and everyone ran away. Yep. So we should go sneak up to the caves. Agreed. And see if the Eggies are still there. Uh, we should still sneak through the camp, though. That's what Just I Just in case someone is still there. That's what I said. Sneak up. Okay. Seven. Hate you. Thirteen. So from behind you, as you sneak up to the tent, you hear, Oi! Dwarf! What you doing? And as you turn around, you see four humans standing there, but they're not armed like warriors. They're actually carrying two big dead carcasses between them. I specify dead carcasses because in D&D, everything's dangerous. <laughs> These are dead carcasses. Um, and they're they're standing there kind of slack-jawed. They had walked up right behind you. So 
What is your excuse to them for sneaking up to the camp? I saw the fire. In response, they, they say, well, yeah, they all cleared out, except for those in the camp. I went from Idris Elba to Michigan, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> for those in the cave, they're still up there. We still want our carcasses. Not our carcasses, but the carcasses we find together, you know. What just happened? <laughs> Leaky, help them carry carcasses into the cave. Need any help? Nope, we got this. You sure? Yeah, we don't go more than 20 feet in the cave. That's the rules. There's them the rules, eh? <laughs> I guess we should go find our own carcasses. Okay, how do you want to proceed? They don't really need your physical help, but they've given you some rules for approaching the cave. Okay, bye. Okay, then. Bye. And they push past you, walk right up to the cave with their carcasses. Nothing happens. Okay. Then about 10 seconds later, they emerge from the cave without the carcasses. So Hello again. Hi. Shall we sneak up to the cave? Are you going to be stealthy? Maybe. Sneaking up to the mouth of the cave. 21. Nobody sees Jen as she approaches. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, 18. Nobody Yay! sees Leaky as he approaches. In fact, there's nobody standing there at all, as far as you can see. But the cave is very dark. So do you have dark vision? Yes. I believe I do. Double check. I will need to double check. I know I do. Yes, I do. Okay. So you can see up to 30 feet in the dark, correct? Uh, 60 feet in front of you. Is it dim? Uh, treat dim light as bright and darkness as dim light. Okay, this is darkness properly. So you can see 60 feet? Yes. Okay. Okay, so although it's very dark, you both have dark vision, so that makes this kind of a non-issue. But the entrance to the cave is broad and tall, and the ceiling quickly lowers to a height of 15 feet past the entrance. Um, as far as you can see, though, in this entry chamber, this cave foyer, there's nothing threatening immediately. Wouldn't that be considered an antechamber? To what, though? Also, about 20 feet in, you can see where they dumped the two carcasses. Okay. How do you want to proceed? I'm sneaking in. I don't know what he's doing. I will attempt to sneak in. 22. Oh, word. Key word there being attempt. Attempt. 10. I got a 22. Two men step from behind rock pillars, and they demand to know what your business is with the camp. They're arrayed in heavy armor with dragon motifs on their helmets. I saw the smoke I was investigating. Well, you can leave now. We don't need you, dwarf kind. Dwarf kind? Dwarf kind. Mm -hmm. We don't need you here. Go. Okay. Leaky turns and walks to the entrance of the cave. Oh. Told you to go, not just stand at the at the mouth of the cave. Private property, get. Fourteen to stay in. We're at an impasse. They're watching for you, <laughs> and you're now stealthy. Are we gonna take action? I'm waiting for this one because I'm not coming out first. He knows right. that rule. I'm gonna attempt to stealth back into the cave and stealth behind. Careful. Nineteen. Okay, you're able to sneakily enter the cave, but these guys have their weapons readied. They think something suspicious is up, but they're not moving past that thirty foot demarcation from the entrance of the cave. It was 20. They, the carcasses were 20. They were standing 30 feet ah, back. I'm going to make another stealth check to try and get behind them. Okay. 12. Roll for initiative. <laughs> wow, okay. All right. Uh, whose dexterity is higher? My dexterity score is 20. So is mine. You're going first, followed by Jen. That seemed fair? Yeah. Okay. And then these guys. So our order of initiative is Leaky, Cesaria, and then Diane, Mike. Mike. Big Mike. You ready? Yes. I'm going to swing with my great axe. First. So you just full on charging in. Yep. Okay. They know I'm there. All right. 20, not natural. Uh, that is enough to hit. With 12. 15 damage. Uh, all right, you knock one of them to the ground um, and dent his chest plate, but he's not dead. He's just bleeding profusely. All right. Did you I'm hit going Mike the or... other one. Okay. <laughs> Did you hit Mike or Donnie? I took Donnie down. I'm going after Mike now. All right, he's blooded. 17. Is enough to hit? For 12 damage. All right, you hit Mike really hard, but you don't blood him quite the same way. Okay. All right, that makes it Cesario's turn. And you're still stealth. Uh-huh. Because you didn't fail the last check. Uh -huh. So this is when <laughs> Cesario runs both all the dice in the game. That's a hit. <laughs> Mike's dead. Let's not count. I don't have time for that. Mike's dead. <laughs> Five. What did you do to him? Narrate ten, that. 27 damage. You, it was a crossbow shot, right? Yes. We want to narrate what happened there? It went in through his nose and out the back of his skull. Specific and deadly. I like that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Donnie is going to get up and he's going to hit you. Um, Egyptians. As hard as he can. And he is wielding a scimitar. He's got a multi-attack. All right. So he's crazy. Sure. Misses. Oh, boy. The fear of death <laughs> enters into Donnie's small orange face. Leaky's going to grapple. Okay. Ten. 
You grapple him. Really? Yeah. All right. Okay. So if you've physically grappled him, are you going to incapacitate? Hit to incapacitate? Grappling itself is not doesn't end combat. It gives you advantage on attacks against him and prevents him from running. But if you hit to incapacitate, you, we know that he's not dead when he hits zero. He's chattable. I suppose. Okay, so you, I mean, you could do, you could just strike him with pretty much anything at that point. And a fist. Yeah, he's pretty close. What's your strength score? Eleven. So you could slap him really hard and still knock him down to zero. Nineteen. Jen slaps him into submission. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cesaria. Cesaria slaps him into submission. My bad. Okay. So uh, proceed with your interrogation. What are you keeping in this cave? Um, nothing. And he spits at you. <laughs> Leaky's gonna roll an intimidation check. Yeah. And Leaky is going to tear Mike in half with okay, a strength so, check for intimidation. All right, let's just break that rule down for listeners who may or may not be familiar with this. This is one of the alternative rules that's listed in, I, I don't know if it's a DMG or the player's handbook, but effectively you are allowed to make any skill check using any of your ability scores if you can justify it to the DM. So in this case, Leaky's charisma is really low. And so instead of trying to talk his way out of a situation, instead he's going to grievously disrespect a corpse. Is what he wants. <laughs> so yes, I am. You break down that logic again. I just you pretty much just did it. What What are you doing? I mean, I, I'm ripping Mike in half to intimidate Donnie. Okay, to so you're going to shred his friend with your bare hands. Yes. Okay. Thirteen. Mike is made of sterner stuff than you thought. You dislocate one of the arms. <laughs> Okay, that makes it Cesaria's turn. It does. Let's see. 17 for a persuasion check. Okay. Uh, to make Donnie talk. <laughs> he says, all hell Tiamat. Does that make it Leaky's turn again? Yeah. Leaky's going to attempt to rip Mike in half again. Oh boy. 17. Body parts go everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what are you keeping in the cave? Eggs. Please don't do that to me. Dragon what? eggs? That and also edible eggs. So would you like us to feed you alive to the dragon eggs? Well, they're eggs, so... No, but we can chain you up to the side of the wall for when they hatch. Good God. What did I do to you? You exist. I can... He we, begs we, for his life. We can How many people are in the cave? Define people. How, How many, many living creatures other than the eggs are in the cave? Oh, God. Several... Several dozen. How many eggs are there? Do you know there's three eggs? We do now. Darn it! <laughs> <laughs> How close to hatching are they? Uh, he does not know that. He believes they're really close and babbles about how at any moment dragons will burst forth and burn both of you to cinders, but he doesn't seem very proficient in dragon lore. Despite the helmet, the helmet is definitely a thrill. He looks like an expert, but he ain't. Is Resimir still here? No. He left with the rest of the camp. Burned everything on their way out. Left us here. Why'd they the leave you here? Camp. Where Cave eggs. Where is he headed? North. To, to Baldur's me. Gate. Please let me live. I've given you everything I know. I've changed my mind about dwarves overall. <laughs> Does Leaky want a lollipop? Just rip his femur off. Fresh. Leaky kind is kind of hungry. You're a monster. <laughs> Are you sure you've told us everything? Yes. Because without your femur, you'll just bleed out slowly on the floor. We'll leave you there. He's begging for his life. He's given up more than he probably should have as a cultist. But watching his friend be literally turned into shredded pork before his eyes was a little much. I don't know. I don't need him as a snack. I've got his friend. I'm willing to let him live. I kind of want his mask. Just a helmet. Yeah, but it may get, him, may get us a little ways further with his little buddies inside. Will you give me your helmet? He takes it off. He doffs the helmet. And gives it <laughs> <laughs> I treat it with oil every three days. But what if he runs and goes and tells them that we're here? Leaky's going to roll a strength check to break his legs. Okay, <laughs> sure. Twelve. Legs are shattered. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. He screams in pain. Wait, do I have a knife? But nobody comes to help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brief hold. Think if I have a knife. Why do I need a knife? I have an arrow. What do you need a knife or an arrow for? <laughs> His legs are broken. He's not going anywhere fast. No, but he can scream and he can talk. Why talk. don't you just kill him at this point? This is torture. <laughs> because it's God. fun. He fails one constitution check. <laughs> What's he going to do? Well, he's going to fail twice more and die, probably. <sighs> oh, yeah. Play 
with an evil party is tough. You guys are monsters. <laughs> Leaky, I'll give you two options. Should I put him out of his misery or cut his tongue out and see what happens? Leaky well, doesn't care. Ooh, he's stable. <laughs> <laughs> That's unexpected given the fact that he's probably got internal hemorrhaging. 20, not, well, 12, because it wouldn't be actual with my crossbow. I'm just using the arrow to cut his tongue out. Okay, you've cut his tongue out and broken his leg. <laughs> <laughs> You've I've destroyed his soul, made him admit his dirtiest secret. <laughs> what is left to do to this NPC that we can't just move forward with? <laughs> I, put, I put his tongue in my pocket for Linky for later. Delicacy. <laughs> <laughs> my god, that got really dark really fast. It did, yeah. Now what are you rolling for? 18. I shoot him with an arrow and put him out of his misery. He's definitely finally in a better place. Even if that place is just the blackness of non-existence, it's better than whatever it was standing with you two monsters. Oh my god. This is not a conversation I'd ever had with my other group. They'd be like, isn't there a way we get him into a senior home so he can at least be cared for appropriately? And you're like, no, let's just keep bisecting him. God. Now that he's down, I'm gonna roll a straight trick to rip a leg off. <laughs> you rip a leg and the rest of the body explodes and you have a lollipop. It's a bloody mess. Now Leaky has a lollipop oh, of a femur God. of Donnie. Mike shattered all over the floor. Donnie shattered all over the floor and Donnie's tongue is in my pocket. And just from the entrance of the cave, you just hear a, oh, f from the Michigan Hunters. <laughs> Who are you and do you want some? They take off. All you see is their tail end. Oh, God. Oh, uh, Leaky begun, begins to chomp on the leg meat. Beautiful. Hamstrings. Mmm, them hammies. <laughs> I think we've broken our DM. Meanwhile, the world moves on. <laughs> Okay. What else? Uh, uh, that uh, there's a uh, 400 experience in that butchery for the both of you. So, uh, just from what you can see with the dark vision, um, there's obviously a big passage that goes out the end of it, where it tapers down to 15 feet high, and then it kind of smooths into a tunnel beyond that. That's what you can see without anything else, and it's quiet from that direction. Oh God! Natural 20 to sneak in. You snuck so hard that nobody's ever been quite so quiet in that area. <laughs> Leaky? I'm going to try and sneak. The key word there being try. Because Le Leaky tends to do critical fails at the really wrong time. Oh, yeah. Usually in like twos and threes. Usually, yeah. yeah. Eleven. Thankfully, it's just a quiet fungus garden that you see with steps descending down into it. So the entrance to the cave ends here at a ten-foot drop-off. To your right... Broad steps are roughly hewn into a natural stone ramp. It's quite pleasant to the eye. The cavern below is carpeted with a profusion of fungi, ranging from a few inches high to nearly as tall as a human adult. So there are two paths leading through the fungi garden. One on the right, and one on the left. Do you want to go on the right or the left? Let's go right. Okay. That's it? 18 to sneak into the right side. Okay, you sneak. <clears throat> Seven. Either way. Four big fungus monsters jump up to attack you. So these purplish mushroom people use root-like feelers growing from their base to creep across the cavern floor to you. Uh, they've got four big stalks protruding from their central mass that lash out, reaching for you already. Oh, uh, yes. They've never been quite so excited. These are like super fungi. Roll for initiative. Uh, 20 not natural for initiative. 10. Well, the gods are not smiling on you. After what you did to Mike, you've lost their favor. Okay, so you had a natural 20, Cesario. Unnatural. Okay, so Cesario, Leaky, and our four fungus friends. Also, I just realized that on dexterity saving throws, I get advantage. Yeah. If I can see it coming. Keep that in mind in case there's ever any traps in this campaign. Or dragons. True. Because the dragon breath is dexterity saving throw. Well, oh my god, too many fungus. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Cesare, you're first. You've got four lumbering violet fungus beasts lashing towards you on their tiny little creeper crawler legs. Can they see me? Fungus don't I see, see in the traditional sense. They sense. They smell. Do they know me? They ferment. They also foment, which means they get angry. They're coming for you. You don't have any sneak. 
Yes. Filter. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know if I should bleep that or not. The fungus do not wait for any elf. They pause for dwarfs. It's already coming for me. You can't sneak. 1d6, 1d8. Just roll. 19. Hit. 16 damage. Doesn't kill it. Are you hitting fungus? 1, 2, 3, or 3.5? 3.5. Okay, 3.5. Um, 16? Le Leaky's not rolling mm -hmm. with the boot. <laughs> Leaky reconsidered that decision. <laughs> Fair enough. 19. It's a hit. For 6 damage. Okay, are you hitting 1, 2, 3, or 3.5? 3. Three. Alright, ah! second deck. <laughs> I was gonna say, wait. I'm getting there. Hit. 8 damage. Hit the same one? Three, yeah. Six plus eight is 14, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. All right, that makes it Fungas' turn, and they get multi-attack. Um, they make a 1d4 rotting touch attacks. Awesome. We're That's gonna... confusing. Okay. So their multi-attacks means I have to roll a d4 for every one that attacks. Hey, hey we'll That's the number of attacks they get to make. Whatever. Two. Two? Okay, so the first one gets to make two attacks, and he is going to roll... Actually, it's not a he or she. They don't have gender that it's... way. It is going to roll a d8. What's Sorry. your armor class? Six, dude. It fails. Second one's going to attack you also. It fails. Other two are coming for you. Leaky. It fails. Fourth one, uh, it fails. Okay. They are not well prepared to take on adventurers in armor. I'm not wearing armor. The closest thing I have to armor is the boots. Oh, Lord. <laughs> You're right. killed, kind of. So that makes it Cesaria's turn. It's a hit. It, it's a hit, yeah. Wow, they're AC's 16 really damage. Low. 1, 2, 3, or 3.5. 3.5. Bah! Kills over. Releases a huge plume of spores, making you both sneeze. Hopefully you don't have any dirty, damp crannies. It's my turn, right? I'll yep. Just, All right. Theater. It'll fill me up eventually. Hit. Dead. 13 damage. Dead. All right, I'm going after two. Okay. Hit. Eight damage. Okay. This fear is feeling great. That makes it their turn. So the first one's going to roll with two attacks. And it's going to go after Cesaria, because it was going after Cesaria before. Single-minded creatures, huh? Uh, they have an intelligence rating of one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. They're fungus. Mm -hmm. What do you expect? Nine plus nothing is nine, mostly. Eight. Mm -hmm. All right. And then the second one is going to go after you. It's going to make... Two attacks. Ooh, it finally hit you for five necrotic damage. Yay. Second attack fail, so. That makes it Cesaria's turn. You've got one and two in front of you now. Cesaria's rolling to attack. Thirteen. She hits. What do I got? Eight and five and six. Nineteen. Are you hitting one or two? One. Dead. Going in for two. All right. Hit. Dead. Twelve damage. Dead. Dead! Okay, you got 200 experience combined, so 100 apiece. Okay, nothing else moves. Otherwise, you have this pretty little fungi area. Hooray! Hooray! Check it! Um, at the other end of this room, there is an obvious funnel out, but also you notice there's a bridge in the darkness that looms overhead. You guys can just barely make it out. There's a bridge that spans above this room, and the only entrances and exits from that bridge are on ledges. 35 feet or 45 feet up. So it's really high up there. It's sheer rock walls. Acrobatics of 21. Not enough. Damn. Sorry. It's an, over, it's an overhanging wall. I'm not even going to try. My acrobatics is plus 11 no matter what. This room obviously empties out <laughs> into another chamber farther on. But these walls are steep cave overhang walls. So you can't really climb up there. Sneaking. 13. Okay, the next chamber appears to be very quiet. So did the last one. Why can I not math today? 13 to sneak behind him into the next room. What was yours again? 13. Okay. Um, the, really? The room appears to be very quiet except for the great number of dead bats laying on the ground as you cross it. That's it. It's the way be. I'm going to roll a perception check to see if I can figure out why the bats have died. Probably not a bad idea. 17. Uh, peering into the gloom up above you. Relative gloom. You see thousands of bats carpeting the ceiling, asleep. We need to be quiet. Like, really quiet. It's not me that has a problem being quiet. We're, I'm going to attempt to sneak to sneak through this room. You've already succeeded, so you don't need to roll again. Oh, okay. Yep, you already succeeded, but you saw, you, we, we checked for the dead bats. Okay, so um, you're able to cross from this room. Now, as you cross through it to the other side... You see three possible ways to go. One are 
One is a ledge that drops down about 10 feet, and you can't really see over that without getting closer. There's a pathway upwards, stairways that go up to the right, to your right, and then to the other side it opens up into another area. So You're in this case, lead. it's a three possible path junction. I'm going to walk up to the ledge and proceed what's past it. Okay. 13. So you smell like just disgusting rot, garbage, refuse. And since you have dark vision, you can see farther than your, your regular player would be able to. And you can see that this appears to be wherever the kobolds and the cultists were dumping their garbage onto this succession of ledges that go down for two more levels. So it's a total 20-foot drop. Down at the bottom, there's just heaps of stuff. There's some glinting metal, there's some rotted rope, there's hides and stuff, rotting meat. All sorts of stuff is down there. Gross. One man's treasure is another tribe's garbage, I suppose. <laughs> said that backwards. Did I? That it was one man's trash is another tribe's Thank treasure. You it. What do you want to do? Do you want to investigate the shiny metal further, or do you want to take one of the other paths? It's up to you. I'll investigate the shiny metal further. I was going to say, I thought about it, but I really don't want to go play in that much crap. 16. Cool. You're able to get down there pretty quickly and you find a bunch of belts without belt buckles and you also find some waterlogged books and really nothing of value, but you are attacked by four screaming troglodytes that come up going... <laughs> Roll for initiative. As much as I love shiny, if it's in a garbage pile... Mm. 11 for my initiative. You're going first. Um... So they, they were stealth, they were kind of chameleoned amongst the garbage, but once you went down into their playpen... You triggered them. So they're ready to rock and roll, but you get to go first. There's four of these troglodytes. They look like uh, big gray lizard people. Okay. Thirteen. You blow one out of existence. You just knock the life right from his empty technology-hating eyes. Even 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 without doing the damage count? Oh, I saw the damage count. I can do the math in my head. Sixteen? <laughs> you knocked him into the afterlife. <laughs> Second attack. Before he reads this, it's important to remember that Leaky is defending garbage rather than running away. Okay, proceed. 11. Is enough to hit. For 13 damage. You destroy that one, too. Uh, so that makes it their turn, and they are going to first... Uh, they're going to make you do a constitution check. Is it constitution? Yeah, it is. You need to roll a constitution check of DC 12 as they emit this stench. Is it a save? It's a DC constitution saving throw. 26. A normal human or normal sentient being would be overcome by the stench, but for you, it brings the scent of home. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're not overcome by their odious being. So they're going to attack you now, though. Um, actually, one of them is going to try to attack you. We'll see clip. what the other one does. Good they get multi-attack. They make three lady. attacks. Two with bite. Two, one with bite, two with claws. Um... And they do not have... They don't have advantage. Okay. So it's D4 for their bite. The first one's going to try to bite you. I can pick up the D4. And I'm assuming it fails because it gets to add only 4. So it'd be 16. Yes. All right. It's going to now try to claw you. So it's D4 plus 2. Hmm. Critical fail. Breaks his nail. They both start crying. And they both bolt for the exits. You get one attack of opportunity on the one that's running from you. Oh my god. <laughs> so you exit that one hardcore from life. The other one <laughs> rushes for the wall and like folds itself into the crevices and vanishes. Okay. Not curious about where he went? I'm going to go investigate the crack. Oh, okay. All of this over defending garbage. Eleven. Uh, that crack is too small for you to physically get through, but it obviously is a fissure that goes deeper into the bedrock there. Okay. Leaky, king of the garbage. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, I, I, I climb. I climb atop the pile and victory. You've bedecked yourself in glory this day with 150 experience to boot. <laughs> <laughs> you said 150. Yep. Okay. I I climb back up the cliffs. Okay. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. It's a relatively easy climb. Um. At this point, do you want to go left or right? Left or right. Left. Okay. We're going left. All right. So that's going to take you into area seven. And who's leading the party right now? You She's chose sneaking. left. So you're... Okay. Um, <laughs> so you're able to, to pass through this very wide passage all on your own. But as you follow, nothing else happens. <laughs> so clearly something in this area has been changed, but it's very difficult to see 
because it's not only dark, but it's all rocky and everything. So Man. they've messed with this area somehow, but you're not entirely sure what it is they've done. Um, I'm actually going to do a history check, oh, God. which I get advantage on because I'm a dwarf. You're a hill dwarf. Hill, mountain dwarf. Mountain dwarf. Okay, fair enough. Natural 20. Uh, you can see that there's an area where they've actually cut the stone out, and they've replaced it with really heavy parchment. So you can see the shoddy, cruddy stonework that they've done. To your eye, it is the most heinous thing you've ever seen. It's a blasphemy. She doesn't understand why you're so upset. <laughs> I'm going to go investigate the parchment. Okay. 14. How exactly are you investigating the parchment? What does that mean? Are you stomping on it? Are you? What are you doing? Trying to figure out why it's parchment and not rock. Okay. How do you do that, though? I'm poking it. You're poking it. Okay, so it's obviously parchment. There's something lightly hollow underneath. Don't step on it. I move the parchment aside. Okay. You manage to prick yourself as you do that on a needle down below, and you take one damage. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a very shallow trap on which the parchment, parchment sits atop all these spikes. And while you move the parchment aside, you prick yourself. But that's it. Okay. Hey, there's a trap right there. Thanks. Don't you pop. get 150 experience. Woo! <laughs> Damn it, I got a math again. No, I'm sorry. Only 100. Oh, then I don't have to math again. So you get 100 experience for disarming the trap. Yay! Okay. Even though you pricked yourself. I'm not looking up anything important, so continue. Okay. Uh, Cesare, you're leading the party, so as you move into this new chamber, what you see is uh, a long but narrow room, and it's obviously like sheared in half. So one half of it is like 15 feet lower than the other half. It's a sheer drop, like mm -hmm. a, a ledge here. And you see a raised set of wooden stairs that are raised up on wooden pulleys. And sitting near the edge of the ledge are four kobolds, and one kobold with wings. But they're not paying very close attention, so they don't see you enter, particularly because you are so, so sneaky. So what do you want to do? You see five total enemies. There's a ledge that's very dark. They're sitting around with dim lanterns. Bullseye lanterns specifically. So the ones that like shoot a beam of light. Leaky is sucking on his finger. Ow. I'm going to shoot a crossbow at one. Okay, roll for initiative then. You guys have a bonus round, but roll for initiative anyway. Natural 20. I, I don't have any ranged weapons. You're not that far behind me. Time to sing songs to uh, Glory. She goes first. She got a natural 20. 23. She goes first. She got a natural 20. Yeah. No. Okay. And then you and then them. Okay. So the order of operations is Cesaria shooting her crossbow first, Leaky wondering what he should do without a ranged weapon, and then the enemies. And there's four regular kobolds, and there's one winged kobold. Wait, I only have one boot attached to my flail, right? No, they're both attached. Is that what we decided? Is it, is it one boot the base of the flail? Or the other one, depending on how you pick it up. <laughs> you could throw it, though. Uh, 19. Tell, first of all, tell me what it is you're doing, and I'll tell you how to succeed. I'm shooting a arrow with my heavy crossbow at one of the kobolds. Okay, that's kobold. definitely enough to hit a non-winged kobold. How much damage do you do? I think it's dead. 16. Yeah. Do you want to narrate how you just kicked him into the great beyond? I hit him in the back of the head with the arrow, and his face fell into his little campfire thing. So now Ooh. he's sizzling. And the others begin freaking out. <laughs> Proceed. How far away am I? Uh, are you away? are about 35 feet. 35? Yep. All right, I'm going to charge into the fray then. Oh, boy. <laughs> 18. I'm swinging my great axe for 16 damage at a kobold. Dead. Do you want to narrate that or? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Cobalt's Next dead. attack. Cobalts aren't worth it. it dead. You want to narrate that? No. Okay. There's one more kobold and the winged kobold, and they're standing near the ledge. It's her turn. Yeah. Uh, it's their turn. No. Oh, no, it's her turn. Round. It's a surprise round. Correct. They know we're here. <laughs> they know it. Yeah, at this point, like, half, their, <laughs> half of their buddy's dead. Yeah, <laughs> More than half. Um, for dead. the winged kobold. What's the... Uh, let's see, 8 plus 13, 21. Okay, yeah, that's a hit. For 10 damage. 
He'll never fly again. He is dead. I'm gonna swing at the other kobold. Dead? Oh yeah. Yay! Okay, so you wipe their party out within a single turn, like professional killers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that does leave the ledge, and one spilled lantern, and the other lantern is still up. I'm going to investigate the ledge, because I'm right there. Twelve. It's quite dark. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's not the reaction I was expecting. Okay. Well, it's quite dark. I can't do anything. That'd be an investigation, not perception, right? Yeah, um, you perceive what's over the ledge? That is a good question. And the answer is, it's a perception check. Sugar. Wow. It is simply too dark for you to see um, because it's complete blackness and it's far enough that you can't see with your dark vision alone. I'm going to roll a perception check this time over the ledge. Okay. Natural 20. Despite all odds, you're able to perceive <laughs> several ambush drakes. Or, I'm sorry, guard drakes down in the darkness. There's a, there's three of them. They're loping down there. And since you're standing near the ledge, they seem to be moving closer, as if that's a cue for them. They want to get fed. Throw the kobolds. Do I have to do a check for that? I'm going to throw a kobold over the edge. The ambush, or the, I'm sorry, the guard drakes go crazy and immediately begin eating the kobold. I'm going to throw the rest of them. They go into a feeding frenzy. This is the best day the guard drakes have <laughs> Okay. Uh, by the way, there is, uh, 225 experience total for this combat. You can take it. Okay. Leaky is feeling generous and doesn't want to do it. He didn't learn anything from this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so, um, the guard drakes mean that they're training. Like, the, the guard drakes don't occur naturally. That's nope. something that has to be trained into the ambush ones. So that means that they're training these guard drakes for some particular reason. Although the reason isn't evident from this chamber alone. They're training them to protect the dragon eggs. Most likely. That's probably a pretty good guess. So there's nothing of value amongst what was left from the bodies that you tossed. Um, but from your natural 20, you can also see that's just a refuse pit. Like, they just keep the drakes down there. There's nothing of value down there either. Then maybe if we keep feeding the drakes, if we feed a drake a body, they'll become our friends. Maybe. No, in any case, the only other way out mm -hmm. from the end of this particular chamber is a stairway that was directly opposite the ledge that leads upwards. Up we go! And what's up there is dim lamplight. You can see it flickering because it's about a 20-foot climb. Steep, okay. though. Very steep. Okay? All right. And that's going to be for next episode. Episode 6, Revenge of the Kobolds. All right, so <laughs> that's it for this particular episode of the Diecast. We're hoping that you're enjoying this. Um... Thank you for listening, and we hope you listen to episode six. And interspersed every other week, we're doing the regular Cannon Fodder podcast, so we should be wrapping up the season with whenever this one airs. And if you don't mind, go give us a review on iTunes or on your podcast provider of choice, because it does give us feedback that we learn from, and it also helps put this show in other D&D fans' clutches. Yes. Um, also, check out our YouTube channel, uh, Cannon Fodder. Uh, where I personally, as Kyle, will be playing No Man's Sky, and we are titling this... Can of Fodder Captain's Log. Um, where I create my own story out of No Man's Sky. Yep. So please check that out. It's going to be our first experiment with Let's Playing. Yes. Essentially, basic, basically, yes, that is a Let's Play. So we hope you check that out, and we hope you enjoy that as well. So I've been Travis. I'm the DM, Malignant God of Dice. I've been Kyle Newcomb. I play the character of Leaky, exile of the Golden Tur clan, and wielder of the boot bolo! That echoed. My name's Jen, um, and I play Cesaria, the rogue cleric who steals things and tries to keep Leaky alive. The Cannon Fodder Diecast is produced in DM by Travis Knight and stars Kyle Newcomb as Leaky the Barbarian and Jen Clark as Cesaria the Rogue Cleric. Music by Kevin McLeod and used within the Creative Commons license. Horde of the Dragon Queen is part of the D&D 5e series and published by Kobold Press. This podcast is intended for entertainment purposes only. Always bring a towel and thanks for listening.